kind of, whoops, reddish brown. Oops, that was a <laughs> rookie mistake. Hey there. Today, I am going to be making Shruti Jane's uh, roasted chickpea salad with za'atar. And it's not just chickpeas. It's going to have cabbage and carrots and well, oh, fennel. But first, we're gonna, we're gonna roast the chickpeas with some spices. So I've got two cans of chickpeas that I have drained. And, oh, I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Amanda, hey. And then I'm going to add two and a half teaspoons of olive oil and some salt. It calls for <laughs> Himalayan salt, but I don't happen to have any Himalayan salt around today. So, and you may not either. So you can just use whatever salt you've got, but if you do have it, go for it. And I've got my oven heating to 250 degrees. So how much salt do I call? Oh, I'm supposed to measure this, okay. So a teaspoon. It calls for a quarter teaspoon of black pepper, but you know, I just, I just, I just don't measure this pepper. I'm just gonna wing it. There we go. And I am gonna measure this. It calls for two teaspoons of za'atar, which is a blend of dried savory herbs with sesame seeds and uh, sumac, sometimes with other spices. And then we're gonna add the zest of one lemon and the juice of one lemon. And this is just gonna brighten it all. What I'm very curious about is that Shruti has you roast this at 250 degrees, which I think it's quite low, but I think maybe she's just trying to kind of, you're not browning the chickpeas, you're just kind of getting the seasoning to attach itself to, like sort of dry onto the, onto the chickpeas. I'm just gonna spread this out on a baking sheet. I'm gonna make sure that they're all in one layer, so just spread them out with your hands. All right, here they go, into the oven for 10 to 15 minutes. And in the meantime, I'm going to fry some shallots, but I'm gonna wash my hands first. Alrighty, so we are moving on to the next step, which is to fry some shallots until they're kind of, whoops, reddish brown. Oops, that was a <laughs> rookie mistake. Measure your oil over the pan. So it's a third of a cup of canola oil, which I now have, you know, various bits of across my counter. Now she says to heat it to 350 degrees, but you know, I think I'm just gonna heat it until when I add a shallot, it starts really frying. I think rather than get out my thermometer and all that because it's just not my style. Let's see how this goes. I think I feel like it needs just a, it's starting to shimmer and get kind of, the surface is getting a little wobbly, but uh, I'm gonna give it a little bit more time. What's interesting to me about this recipe is that it's the kind of dish that you can make ahead of time and it actually gets better with age. It sounds like it, all the flavors start kind of like marinating and melding and the carrot will soften a little bit so that it's soft on the edges but still crunchy the next day. So I'm making it today. I might eat a little today, but I'm probably gonna eat most of it tomorrow. Ooh, do you hear that? Okay, that to me says that this oil it may not be exactly 350 degrees, but it's close enough. So I'm gonna use a wooden something, in this case a wooden spatula, just to break them up so that they're getting enough space. Now, with shallots, the first thing you have to do when they hit the fryer is they're gonna release all of their steam and all of their moisture, and you want to cook that off. But you wanna do it so that you're cooking it off quickly, but not burning the shallots before it's cooked off. And then I have a plate, whoop, with a paper towel, lined with a paper towel, ready to go. If I was, <laughs> If I had my act together more, I probably would do a giant batch of this, of the shallots, and save the rest for other dishes, because it's always nice to have fried shallots around. You can hear it, like the, the sound has gotten a little bit quieter, which to me says that the moisture has cooked off, and now they're just in the kind of browning stage. So I'm gonna keep them moving, because the ones around the edge are, are getting very brown, and I want the, everyone, everything to be nice and even. They're nicely brown, none of them are black, which is, good because you don't want to have a charred uh, shallot in this dish. All right, and then we are going back to the stove again for the final step, but I'm going to wait until the chickpeas are almost done. So we're gonna take a quick break. So um, it turns out that the chickpeas, maybe I didn't drain them very well, but they're like, <laughs> ah, whoops, there's like a slick of chickpea water or juices at the bottom of the pan. So I'm having to, I ended up turning up the heat to 300 and shaking them a couple times and just letting them roast longer. So. In the meantime, I'm eating, I'm gonna snack on some raisins. 
which are also part of the recipe, but they come in at the end. And I'm going to go answer some emails and I will see you in a bit. But just know this might happen when you make it. It's totally cool. You just let them cook longer. It's time to take out the chickpeas. It's been a while and they have gotten a nice kind of golden color, as you can see. And the herbs, the za'atar has attached itself to them. So I'm just gonna put them over on the side for a minute while I get the vegetables cooking. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get my saute pan heated. Whoops, <laughs> try not to light that on fire. And so I'm gonna add a teaspoon of olive oil, which does not seem like very much, but we're gonna go with it. Like I've got two cloves of garlic, which I have smashed and chopped. And then I'm gonna add, very quickly add the carrot and the fennel and the cabbage. Oh, that's so pretty. Just move those around and make sure you kind of scrape the garlic off the base so that the garlic doesn't burn. You can see that the vegetables are steaming a little bit. I'm gonna cook these for five minutes. You, I think, <laughs> considering my opinion about how this recipe should work, I, I would just want these to kind of wilt a little bit while not charring the garlic, just using the garlic to scent them. And I'm gonna let that sit for a couple of minutes. All right, so then what happens is we, after we get this cooked a little bit, and I'm gonna add some salt, it doesn't say to, but I think you're gonna need it. It'll also help wilt the, wilt the veg a little bit. I'm gonna shut off the heat. I think this is good to go. We're gonna add the roasted chickpeas. Now this is the challenge. Try not to pour them, have them rolling all over your stove. And scrape up the, the za'atar and all the bits because they are gonna nicely flavor the rest of the salad. And I'm supposed to add a tablespoon of raisins. And I think there is no point in measuring that. So I'm going to just pull them apart and toss them in. And I'm gonna add my quarter cup of roughly chopped mint and a tablespoon, oops, of maple syrup. Trudy says that you can add some more lemon juice or even a vinegar if you'd like. But also if you make this a day ahead, you might wanna hold off adding any more acid and just wait until the next day and then do that to help kind of sharpen the flavors. Did I miss anything? Miraculously, no. Okay. Didn't do the shallots yet, but I wanna just give this a taste and see how it's, see how it's all coming together. That's very good. I'm gonna add a little bit more salt and I am going to add, because I'm gonna eat, gonna eat them today, this guy, lemon, seedy lemon. So I'm trying to catch them as they go. Shruti, thank you so much for this fantastic recipe. Like you could have it as like a light dinner, a nice side dish. Okay, they're my slightly too brown shallots, but they're gonna do, they're gonna do just fine. And then I'm gonna taste it one more time, but this time with some shallot. I might even add a little bit more za'atar next time. Definitely finish with lemon juice and like keep you know seasoning to taste with salt and pepper as you like. I hope you'll make this fantastic dish. I had fun making it. I like that it's all kind of like you're all in one spot at the stove, just kind of layering in all the flavors. So thanks for hanging out. I will see you in two weeks.